Good evening. Welcome back to the Central Office of Southern Phone Man Telecom and the Central Office Telnet. Sites.google.com forward slash site forward slash Southern Phone Man Telecom and sites.google.com forward slash view forward slash Central Office Telnet. Um, <clears throat> I did a video, a little video last evening, yesterday, um, in which a viewer left a message for me and asked me to do a video about um, a push-button phone <clears throat> that wasn't ringing. And this video is going to be for SPC Queens County 574. And this is going to be the video he requested. Now, for a little bit of a disclaimer, he didn't get back to me. So, the commentary he left was <clears throat> a little on the vague side because there are several things that could be giving his uh, telephone a problem with the ringing. And I'll be right back. And I apologize about that. Again, there are a number of things that could be giving his uh, telephone an issue with the ringing. Um, without knowing what type of telephone it is, um, what exactly the issue is, the wiring, what have you, I'm going to take... And point out a possible, a couple of possible scenarios that could be doing it. And we're going to take the video over to the bench. Um, you're going to see a mess on the bench, so please excuse that right up front. But there's a network of a telephone that I'm going to use to show a few possible scenarios of what could be wrong with this individual's telephone. So we'll be right back. All right, before I go any further, I want to thank the viewer for taking the time to leave a comment like that. Um, I appreciate that. Um, at any rate, again, sorry for the mess. This telephone here is the subject of it. Whoop. I'll be right back. All right. Sorry for my camera work. I know it's bad, but this is the telephone. This is the 500 that's right now subject of a series. Um, it's being restored, but here is what I'm talking about. These, this is a, um, a model 500 telephone. It's a rotary telephone, but basically this network and the ringer are used in a push-button version. Again, I don't know what this individual's telephone looks like. I don't know if it's a Western Electric 2500 or what have you. But this, these scenarios could cover um, numerous types of telephones. Um Whenever someone approaches me about a phone uh, that's not ringing properly, the first thing I'm going to have them do is check the wiring. So, on this ringer, we got four leads. You've got slate, you've got slate red, you've got black, you've got red. These wires, and I'm not going to get too deep into the technical side of this, but there has to be, it has to be wired in series. It has to be wired correctly with the capacitor, because if you don't wire it correctly with the capacitor, you will short the line out and create an off hook situation in which you will not be able to make or receive telephone calls. So, 
the first thing you need to do is look at your wiring. Um, in the case of a 500, with the four leads, you've got terminal A, terminal K. That takes the slate and the slate red wires. Black will go to L1, red will go to L2. That's the proper wiring on a 500 type network or a 2500 type network. Now, the second thing that I would have someone do, and I'm going to try to get the camera to pick this up, but right under here, right there, where the tip of this tool is, there's a bias spring. And if the ringer's working and if the wiring is proper, and it's still not ringing, you would move the bias spring to the other direction and then test, obviously test uh, the ringing on the telephone again. Now, another scenario is going to be if your line is a voice over IP and if your line is a voice over IP um, people think they need to go into these things and rewire and move things around and, and that's just not going to help you get the phone to ring properly these ringers pull a lot of juice from the line and it takes some power to get them to ring um the voice over IP lines are not as strong as the old conventional POTS line. So getting into the unit and rewiring it to make it work on a modern line is not a good idea. Um, the phone really does not have to be rewired to, to work on a modern line. Um, so... What I'm going to do is talk about the ATA that one of these analog telephones would be hooked up to. I happen to have in the central office a lot of Grandstream ATAs. And in one of the settings in which I'm going to show you, one of the settings will say Enable high ring power. Now I'm going to show you what I mean. I'm going to pause the video. All right, we are back. And we are on the interface of a Grandstream HT802. And right here, over here it says enable high ring power, which by default, one of these things comes out of the box. It's set to no. It will have to be set to yes. And once you, anytime you change a setting on one of these ATAs, you scroll all the way down and click apply. So that's another possibility, I guess, that you could check. You also want to make sure that your wiring is screwed down properly. You want to make sure that the wiring on each of these terminals is not touching the wiring on the terminal next to it, because um, that could create some issues as well. Um, so those are a few things that I can point out without with not knowing anything about the telephone that this um, viewer is talking about. Um, and if the viewer watches this video, I will ask um, to please contact me um, by going to the contact uh, page on site.google.com forward slash site forward slash Southern Phone Man's Telecom. 
Um, my email address is there. That way we can get into this a little bit further. Um, because right now all I'm basically doing is taking wild guesses at what the issue might be. So this video is going to be on my channel. And it's the video he requested. Um, I know it's not probably not going to help. But it's right, oh, right now it's the best that I can do. So again... This is the Central Office of Southern Phone Man's Telecom and the Central Office Telnet. I thank you for watching.